We're going to get into our Oakland A's, and by Oakland we mean also Philadelphia and Kansas City A's and future Las Vegas potentially, and just A's. Mount Rushmore, where we talk about who we believe are the top four players in the organization's history, and you can't tell the story of the organization without these four players. They don't have to be players. Or broadcasters or managers. We have gone all over the place. We have. You're right. And when I say players, I say, I should just say anyone involved in the organization. Right. Right. You can't tell the story. But before we get into the Mount Rushmore, I am going to share with you where the Oakland Athletics got their team name from. It is one of the oldest nicknames in professional sports. They played on the East Coast. They played in the Midwest. On the West Coast, they're going to be into the Southwest soon, most likely. They began as a Philadelphia Athletics in their earliest incarnation. And this is, again, according to TeamNameOrigin.com. And were known as such until 1955 when they moved to Kansas City, where they became the Kansas City Athletics. And then they went to California in 1968, became the Oakland Athletics. But they have since been known more often as the A's, less of a mouthful. And it's The name comes from the Athletic Club. Mm -hmm. The Athletic Club in Philadelphia. Right. Yeah. Yep. So we talked about this way early about team names that need to change. Mm-hmm. Is it lazy to keep that team name from what 1901? It was founded, they were founded in 1901. They were. Should they keep it forever and ever and ever until the end of time? Or should they change it to something new in Vegas? I mean, they're plan they're planning on keeping it, I I assume, is what they it feels are. like. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Or should they change it? They should keep it. How are you going to mess with 123 years of baseball history? <laughs> they do it all the time, Brig. I know, but this... <laughs> when, well, okay, when we talk about the names that belong on the Mount Rushmore list, mm-hmm. you, you can't tell the story of the franchise without some of these names that go back almost as far as the team's origin. Yeah. It would be really difficult to reconcile that, the necessity of its own history... With a team name change. That's my argument. Okay. Yeah, and I think it makes sense. Absolutely. There's certain team names you don't want to change. But but right? but that's always like, my like argument. The Braves, I'm always on the history side. The Braves have been around forever. It feels like at some point it's gonna have to change. I don't know when. Mm. And I hope not because I love it. Me too. Because it to me it feels like using the name like Warriors. Yeah. Right? That's what it feels like to me, but you yeah. know. Yeah, you know, my understanding is limited. Yeah, I'll admit that. Um, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, there's certain team names that go back forever. Yankees, uh, Red Sox, Sox, White Sox, all of it. Cubs, yeah. So that all go back this far. Yeah, and they'll never change those. So let me give you a couple of uh, anecdotes. Those, that's the wrong word. Let me give (laughs) (laughs) Let me give you a couple of notes about the Oakland Athletics team history. Again, as Brad said, they started out in Philadelphia, moved to Kansas City, and ended up in Oakland. They've been around 124 seasons. This is their 124th. They began in 1901. Their record all time is 486 on the win-loss percentage with 9,279 wins, 9,796 losses. When you said 486, I was like, that is a low number, Brig. Yeah. That ain't right. It is right. That's a number. Well, I was like, that's the number of losses they've had. That's the oh, yeah. So that's the percentage. number of losses they've had in the last three point, years. Point four. <laughs> <laughs> no, point four eight six is win their win-loss percentage. <laughs> I think that's what I said, but I'm glad you made it clear. It's a 486. <laughs> 486. 486 yeah. percent percentages. Okay, playoff <laughs> appearance. They've had 29 playoff appearances in 124 seasons. 15 pennants, nine world championships. So doing these, we've done a couple, we've, we've talked a lot about these over the last couple of days since I've been here. And it, it, you feel the gravity of how hard it is to make the playoffs, win a pennant and win a world series by seeing how many teams have been around forever and how few of them have more than just like a couple. Right. Or just a handful. And it, I feel like it goes a long way. I am just I can't believe I'm going to say this. Yeah, But baby. it goes a long way to show, like, to show how many the Yankees have. Sustained excellence. 
Well, not all of us are born that way, but I... it sure feels good to be. <laughs> I love that you walked right into that and you let me have it. And you're just going to sit there and be excited for me. Thanks. Brad. Oh, the next thing. Brad. Okay. <laughs> there are a handful of uh, uniform numbers that are retired and one initials set right so we've got reggie jackson number nine ricky henderson number 24 catfish hunter number 27 raleigh fingers 34 dave stewart 34 dennis eckersley 43 always jackie robinson with number 42 and walter haas was an owner for a very long time and his initials are on the monument wall or whatever they call it the retired numbers wall so the, the initial wh are retired they are Love it. Yep. All Very right. Good. We each have selected names that you cannot tell the history of the team without mentioning. And we're going to argue about them. And we want you to tell us if we're right or wrong. Go ahead, Brad. What's your first one? I'm going to lead off with the King of Thieves, the Man ah. of Steel, ah. Ricky Henderson. Yeah, you are. Can't not. Hall of Famer. He was an MVP runner up or MVP. And then he's a runner up once. Right. He ran up a lot of things. He did run up a lot of things. Six-time <laughs> All-Star, two-time Silver Slugger, one-time Gold Glover. It's interesting to think that Ricky Henderson was only an All-Star six times, despite the havoc that he wreaked on the base pads. Yeah, for 25 years. He led the league in stolen bases just eight times. Just eight. What? Isn't that absurd? What? Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. He, was caught, he led the league and caught stealing four times. Sure. Led the league in runs, scored one time, hits one time, walks three times, and he's the all-time stolen bases leader and will be forever and ever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He is also the all-time leader in caught stealing. I yeah. don't think he will be forever and ever, but it's very much like Cy Young, who is the all-time leader in wins, all-time leader in losses. Yep. Right? Uh, and he is the all-time leader in runs scored as well. The all-time leader in runs. Yeah, he is. Uh so it's 25 years, guys. 25 yeah. years. Yeah. So a couple of years ago, we did a, a bracket challenge in the Baseball Together group. Yeah. And I think it was, was it most overrated player? I think it was most overrated player. Lot. That makes sense. And I did. I threw Ricky Henderson in there just because. <laughs> just because I thought it would be oh. funny to see what anybody said. And somebody said, what, Ricky Henderson? I said, Ricky was a compiler. Because he played for 25 years. No, you're not. I, and it was a joke. I was joking 100%. You yeah. don't compile what 1,406 stolen, stolen bases. Yeah, no. It's not compiling. It doesn't work. It's insane the amount of work that the man did. Because to have, what well, what is that? Go back down real quick. I'm going to do some quick math. What do that's 1741. 1,741 attempts. Attempts. You've got to get on base. You have to be on many base. times. And you don't even get to attempt every time you get on base. No. His on-base percentage over his career is 401. You there you go. Add slugging to that, and it's 820. So the fact that Ricky Henderson was able to get on base and do the things that he did while he was on base, yeah. he is absolutely goes down in history as one of the greatest players ever, has an untouchable record. Yep. But the only guy I can think of now who might get to it is Ellie De La Cruz, but I doubt it. He's the closest. I doubt he will. Look, so Ricky Henderson's stolen base, single season stolen base record is 130. So he stole over 100 three times. Yeah. He did 100, 130, and 108. Yep. And, and we're sitting here wondering if Ellie De La Cruz will even get to 100 yes. this season. Yes. Yes. That's the thing. That's it. How do you steal 130 bags in a single season? Like Acuna stole 70 last year. And we lost our minds. Everyone <laughs> lost their minds. <laughs> Rightly so. Not to take anything away. But my goodness, think of that as double. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, untouchable. Crazy. He's untouchable. Brad, Ricky's on my list, too. Perfect. I, I love it. How are you going to tell the story of the freaking A's without putting Ricky Henderson on your list? I don't know. Roll the tape. Roll the tape. Roll Look at this the guy. tape. Dust covered, smiling. <laughs> Ricky at 60 at the break, baby. <laughs> Look at That's this. my favorite Harold Reynolds story. It's so funny. Ever. <laughs> I mean, the dude just moved. He'd take three steps and he's halfway to second base. Yeah. And I, I loved how low he ran. 
He did. Yeah. And I love so I remember I do remember as a kid, like mm -hmm. I, I remember watching Ricky Henderson and being like, Okay, this is the way you run. But like yeah, if you if you're, like that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're lightning fast, yeah. and you have a low center of gravity and you have super duper duper strong quads. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. But when you're nine and you're kind of wiry, <laughs> yeah. that's not how you run. It's spindly. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah, it that, doesn't work that way. How it goes. <laughs> All right. Well, since you stole mine, can I go? Mm -hmm. Thanks, buddy. My guy's in the Hall of Fame, my next guy. He won a Cy Young Award, so we're going to move up to the mound, okay? Eight-time All-Star, five-time World Series champion. Five times. Five. He won an ERA. His number is retired by the A's. He has a career war of 40.9. Games, 500. One save. <laughs> One save. <laughs> it was probably an extremely high leverage situation. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, a, like game seven or something. Well, for some reason, postseason stats don't count. They're so different. It's so weird. Yeah. It, it might have been like a clinching game at the end of the season yeah, or something like been. that. Well, and that would have been in, you know, it's obviously in the modern era. Right. Uh, ERA, career ERA, 326. This is Catfish Hunter. Catfish. Catfish Hunter. That's... Let's pull the stats. Catfish Hunter. You want to roll the tape while you pull the yeah, stats? Yeah, I'll roll with tape. There it is. Jim Catfish Hunter played for Oakland for 10 years. Again, starting pitcher. Through his time with Oakland, he threw 2,456 in a third innings. He got 1,520 strikeouts. He won a Cy Young in 1974. That was his last year in Oakland. Obviously, they retired his number. And he uh, won the World Series with Oakland three times, 72, 73, and 74. And then he went on to do it with the Yankees. Of course, he did. Two other times, 77 and 78. <laughs> no big deal. That's a lot of winning for one arm. That is a lot of winning. It's a lot of mileage on that one arm. But... Yeah. Yeah. It's a solid choice, though. I mean, Thank you. I think Catfish Hunter is, a, is an excellent selection. I appreciate that. I just don't think you can talk about the... I mean, he has three... three he, he helped lead them to three of their championships. Right. And they only have... What did we say? Did like, we say nine? Nine World Series titles, and he was there for three of them. Significant. I'm saying. Significant. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's a lot. Okay. Do you have Catfish Hunter? I don't. Ooh. No. I had to let you know. <laughs> I do have a pitcher, though. Oh, okay. Uh, I have a guy named... I'm just going to tell you who it is. It's Lefty okay. Grove. Lefty Grove. Lefty wow, Grove. You're reaching back for that. Yeah, I, like I am. It. He played for the Philadelphia A's. Yeah. He's a Hall of Famer, won an MVP, two-time Triple Crown winner. Two-time. Two-time. Two-time Triple Crown winner. And for those of you who don't know, the Triple Crown is having the most wins, striking out the most batters, and having the lowest ERA in the league. He did that twice. He's also a two-time World Series champion. Um, just with the, with the A's, he led the league in ERA five times, had three complete games. Um, or, sorry, led the league in complete games three times. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's no that's deal. very different. It's very different. Very different. <laughs> <laughs> led the league in shutouts twice, saves once. Uh, walks one time as a rookie, mm. but also strike out seven times. One of those times was as a rookie. Yeah. So a little bit of nuke Lelouch in him. Lelouch. I love it. Lefty That's nuke Lelouch. Exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> Baseball and, family, if you got that reference, we need you to hit the like and subscribe button because you're our people. <laughs> <laughs> well, and on top of that, wild pitches as a rookie. Oh, as well. would you look at that? He really is. <laughs> he, he threw at the bull. <laughs> but he led the league in FIP, no. fielding independent. No, he threw at the elephant. <laughs> he threw at the elephant six times, whip three times, hits per nine once, K's per nine five times, and walk or strikeout to walk ratio six times. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's Lefty Grove. And you know something? I was curious because mm -hmm. I was like, there were, there have been a lot of guys over the history of Major League Baseball. Had to have been. By the nickname Lefty. 
Yeah. And in fact, there are 10 other players who went by lefty. <laughs> so it's like a super original nickname. And it's like cool. anybody who throws left, throws left hand. Hey, lefty. Wonder who the first one was. Was it left? It can't have been a lefty Grove. No it, way. No, it wasn't lefty it Grove. It have to be no, earlier than that. It, probably back to the 1890s or something. Um, it was Lefty O'Doul started playing in 1990. <laughs> Lefty, Lefty Tyler started playing in 1910. And looks like, oh, Lefty Leefield. <laughs> it's 1905. There, there he is. That's our guy. That's our guy. Yep. Lefty Leefield. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't belong to the athletics, so we're not going to just keep boring you about him. Who do you play for, though? That's what I'm looking up. <laughs> he played for Pittsburgh. No way. And the Cubs. And Chicago. Yeah. That's awesome. Cool. That's fun. <laughs> that is fun. Pardon me. Um. Okay. Did you, you have Lefty Grove? No. No, I didn't think so. Okay. Can I give you my next one? Absolutely. All right. This one. It's very exciting. Also in the Hall of Fame, we're going to reach all the way back to Philly. This is one of my favorite stories because this guy is a five-time World Series champion, brought nine pennants in with uh, with his tenure because he didn't play for the athletics. He played, and he played right. for a long time, but he was a much less successful player than he was a successful manager. And now we're talking about Connie Mack. It is. Literally, if you look back at the history of not only the Philadelphia Athletics in this organization, but the entire game of Major League Baseball, the history of Major League Baseball is untellable without Connie Mack. Yeah. I kid you not. You cannot. It's like it's like Mountain Landis, but in a different way. You just can't talk about it without talking about <laughs> Connie Mack. Yeah. Because that, that Philadelphia Athletics Club was the premier club. For a really long well, time. How long was he with them? Half a century. Yeah, 50, 50 years. years. 50 years. Yeah. From the time that he was 38 yep. until he was 87 years old, That's he right. was managing the Philadelphia Athletics. That's right. From 1901 to 1950. I'm curious how many managers would like that kind of job security if they're just like, like 25 year, years in, just like, no, no, just fire me. What <laughs> do I have to do? Well, what you got to know, I learned, I had the same question. <laughs> Not only was he, he was a life treasurer what? of the Philadelphia Athletics, okay. but he was also a part owner. Okay. So he's a shareholder in the investment of this franchise, this brand new franchise. And he's like, you know what we're going to do? I, I Just let me be in charge. I will get us a return. But on even then, though, like how often do guys like, <laughs> Like Theo Epstein yeah. has been like, I'm done being GM. I need let to move somebody on. else do it. I want to go work somewhere else in the front office. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let me give me a new that, challenge. That Connie Mack had a passion for being on the field and managing coaching players yep. for 50 years. And finally, the man is 87 years old and is like, okay, it's time. And I, then he didn't die until six years later. Right. Some, some guys, they die as soon as they're done. Yeah. He wasn't even done. He wasn't even sick, I don't think. He just said it was it. I wonder if it was one of those things where he had a hard time going up and down the stairs in the dugout. Those three steps are tough. They can be. Yeah, at 87, how could they not be? <laughs> My grandma, 87, was struggling with three stairs. I'll tell you that. I'm telling you. <laughs> so, a couple of fun facts about Connie Mack, other than his incredible World Series runs and stuff like that. He holds the Major League Baseball record for games managed at 7,755. Untouchable. That'll never get touched. He's the first American League manager to lead to 100 wins, uh, can, and he did it four times, 19, 10, 11, 29, 30, and 31. So not only was he the first one to do it, he did it a whole bunch of times, 100 win uh -huh. seasons. He's the only manager to win back-to-back -back World Series twice. He did it in 10 and 11, and then 19, 29, and 30. He's the only one to ever do it back-to-back -back twice. Not the only one to do it back-to-back, -back, but to do it twice. It's crazy. And, he, and again, we've covered that he spent 50 years with the ball club. That is That, that alone, to me, is just mind-boggling. Yeah. I can't wrap my head around it. Well, you can't tell the story of the athletics. <laughs> <Connie Mack. laughs> he was there the whole time. <laughs> well, and it's funny because like, that's not even half the history. I know. <laughs> that, Isn't that crazy? That's what's weird. Yeah, out of 124 seasons, 
he was there for what? What does that make it a third of it? It's it's a little just a, like a touch under half, right? Not quite a third. Yeah, you're right. I mean, maybe like what's that? I'm not gonna do the math. <clears throat> three eighths. Okay, we'll do that. Seven and three eighths. Just think it's awesome. Just That's like my half size. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. It's not my yeah. hat size. I'm a five eighths. Okay, baseball <laughs> family. If you send me a hat, I need a five eighths. <laughs> All right, you go. <laughs> okay, I do not have Connie Mack. Okay. My next guy, I want to say, I want to go with um, Reggie Barr. So. Reggie Barr, the Reginator. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go with Reggie Jackson. So those, those are references to bench warmers. If anybody's seen it, again, give us a like and a sub because you're our people. Yeah, yeah. yeah because exactly. we need to have you around. And uh, by the way, I'm 12. So. <laughs> Often referenced on this on the show. <laughs> That's right. Again, Hall of Famer, MVP, six-time All-Star, just with the A's alone. Yeah. Three-time World Champion with the A's. One-time World Series MVP with the A's. Member of the 500 Home Run Club, by the by. Yep. He led the league and league scored runs scored twice, home runs twice, RBIs once, slugging twice, OPS twice, intentional walks twice. And for now, he is actually... The all-time leader in strikeouts. Ooh, for now, yeah, for now, somebody's gonna catch him. Who because knows? to be completely honest with you, uh, his strikeout rates, I feel like, like they were high, yeah, like at the time. But with the amount the guys strike out now, because yeah. he has two thousand five hundred ninety-seven strikeouts, that's not an untouchable number. Mm -mm. He played twenty-one years. And he never struck out more than 200 times. A lot of, like, there are several guys who uh, who will strike out 200 times a season now, and it's, like, a, not a big deal anymore, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, I don't like, I hate strikeouts. I, that's not a good thing. But, yeah. No, but it's that number is going to get broken here in the next few years, I'm sure. We'll have to do, we'll have to look and mm. see who's, next in line yeah because i don't think it's very long until it happens that's a great idea that's a, that'll be a fun one to look at <laughs> that will be but that's reggie reggie oxen free <laughs> <laughs> okay very good <laughs> how many do you have left one how many do you have left one okay <laughs> Do you want to go first? No, I'm going to go. No, go ahead. It's your turn. Okay. It's your turn. So uh, I'm going to go with the guy. I'm going to reach all the way back. And I don't uh, I don't know how many people know about this guy, just to be completely honest with you. <coughs> way old school. Just to give you an idea, he was, uh, where's his birthday? 1907. He was born in 1907. You know I love Mason. <laughs> Some scratchy wool, three quarter sleeve jerseys. Okay, <laughs> old timey sports writer, same. Yeah. So, uh, Hall of Fame, three time MVP, triple crown winner, no less. Nine time All Star, two World Series titles, two batting titles. Career WAR ninety three. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Career batting average three twenty five. That's pretty good. Different era. I understand. That. It is. That's okay. But you're going to win an MVP three times either way. Yeah. It doesn't matter. All right. Yeah. We're talking about a guy, this guy, by the name of Jimmy Fox. Jimmy Fox is, uh, well, first of all, he's incredible. He played with the Philadelphia Athletics for 11 seasons. And in that time, he and the Athletics won. Let's get there. <laughs> what happened? I don't know. Two two World Series titles. That's what I needed. Two World Series titles in that time. He played for other teams as well, specifically Boston. He he did play for Boston. But here's the thing I love. Like his stats are great. They take care of themselves. We all should respect Jimmy Fox. Right. And I you he played everywhere. He's first base, third base, catcher. It didn't matter. Wherever they needed him, he he was able to play. But here here's a couple things. He made his MLB debut his junior year of high school. What? Figure that out. Is that he made his at MLB seventeen debut. years old. Holy he was cow! Seventeen. Jeez. He's a junior in high school. Dig this. He had twelve thirty home run seasons. 
Started when he was 17. He had 12, 30 home run seasons. He had 13 seasons with 100 RBIs or more. And my favorite, and if you'll notice, for those of you watching, I'm wearing my City of Rockford Peaches jersey, codenamed Jimmy Dugan on the back. Okay. Jimmy Fox was the inspiration loosely for Jimmy Dugan's character because when he got aged out of baseball as a player, he began managing, and when the war broke out, he managed an all-American baseball girls team. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You were the, adamant about wearing that I was. this segment. The Fort, <laughs> the that Fort Wayne <laughs> Daisies All-American Girls Professional Baseball Club. That's cool. Yes. So he – now, reports indicate, all reports indicate, and with interviews with the, his former players, that he was much more gentle and professional and uh, – you know, diplomatic with his players than Jimmy Dugan is shown as being through Tom Hanks in a league of their own. Right. But it's, it's so cool because you hear about these stories. We've all seen the movie. This is the guy. And he's, he was an all-star it, it, literally a, a career best player. Well, because a, a guy like Jimmy Fox, th there's no comedy there. No, you've got to have the, the grumpy guy. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah there's yeah. the comedy. Yeah. yeah. So that makes sense. Anyway, that was one of my – so as soon as I I was doing the research, I'm like, yep, he belongs on the Mount Rushmore for the team. And then I got doing digging research a little deeper, and I was like, no way. <laughs> That's so funny. Bam. I love that. Jimmy Fox. That's a fun little factoid. Thanks, man. I thought so. Very good. Okay, I'm going to go with my last one then. Okay. This one might be a little controversial because of what he's attached to, what he's admitted to during the mm. course of his of his career. Right, right. But, dude, legit as a – as an Oakland athletic, Mark McGuire was a monster. And I, like I said, I understand what he was attached to, what he did. But, man, he was, he won Rookie of the Year. He was a nine-time All-Star just with the A's, a member of the 500 club over his career, a 1989 World Series champion, and a home run derby champ to boot. He led the league in home runs twice, walks once, slugging three times, OPS once. He won two silver sluggers and one gold glove. He never won an MVP with the A's, but he actually never won an MVP period. Yeah. But he did finish top five once with the A's. And this is the thing that's crazy about this is that he was a young dude with the A's. Yeah. Really young. That he got traded to St. Louis when he was only 33. So his second year in the season, 1987, he led the league. He led the American league with 49 home runs. Yeah. Like that is <coughs> bonkers. Yeah. To me that a young guy like that led the league in home runs and slugging, and he won Rookie of the Year. I mean, that's like an Aaron Judge type season in the 80s. Yeah, yeah golf. Like, to put exactly it into perspective. Right. Yeah, that's exactly like, right. That's, that's what that was. He led the league in walks in 90, and he led the league in slugging again in 1992. So I know a lot of what he's attached to with the steroids and everything because he's admitted to it. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Anything and, you can do to get an edge. And he was right there with, with Jose Canseco. They were the Bash brothers. They were buddies, man. But, of course. Man, it's, it's crazy to see some of those guys, though, who did do steroids, the pure hitters they were. Because he was – Yeah. I mean, he was – okay, he had one season where he hit over 300 with Oakland. He hit 333. And other than that, he was like 235 to 250-ish. Uh, yeah, yeah. ish but he was still one of those guys who was a terror when he was up to the up to the plate because you knew he was always capable of hitting a home run. Yeah. And it's part of the story of Oakland. You don't want Jose Canseco on your on your Mount Rushmore, I feel like. Certainly not. And in those early 90s A's teams, you got to have him on there. He's the guy. I wanted I wanted Brig so badly, Tim Hudson Barry Zito. Yeah. I wanted to put those guys on there, yeah. but I couldn't because they weren't there long enough. Well, that's true. Because Moneyball is about bringing in uh, what, what was Kurt Pratt's character? Who was that? Yep. Like, you know, bringing in guys on uh, the cheap. Oh. I can't. Oh, I, I can't. Can. I'll look it up. <laughs> you keep talking. Anyway, but it's about bringing in guys on the cheap and building an offense based on guys who are who can have a collective uh, Scott Hattieberg. Scott Hattieberg. It was right on the tip of my tongue. Yeah, well, sure. About bringing in guys like Scott Hattieberg and having a collective unit that 
produces X number of home runs and yeah. gets on base X number of times and things like that. But the thing that they completely fail to mention in Moneyball is that you had Cy Young Award winners, <laughs> plural, yeah. on your pitching staff. So I wanted to have those guys on there. Yeah. But they weren't, like I said, they weren't there long enough and they didn't have the numbers that McGuire put up in the 90s with yeah. the A's. That's why I put him there. That's fair. But 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 this is the question, baseball family, and we need you to jump in because I don't know how to answer this question. We talk about this all the time. <coughs> Excuse me. The question is, are we telling the story of the team and the franchise? Because if that's the goal, then you can't tell the story without Mark McGuire. Right, and that's and that's the way I see the, the Mount Rushmore. Right. So that – but – that's a small circle. If you push that out to a Hall of Fame talk, it becomes a very sticky so, similarity. Think about this, Brig. Eras. A team, I know. A team that's I, been around 124 I, years. I you've got eras. I know. I you've hate got, this argument. We've got Lefty Grove. Yeah. I, I Reggie Jackson and Ricky Henderson are basically peers. Yeah. yeah. And then you got Mark McGuire. So I'm leaving somebody out of there. Super early, right? Like maybe Jimmy Fox. Jimmy Fox. Is my guy. Instead sure. of... Instead of Reggie Jackson. Yeah. But then I've got well, yeah, you four can't eras. About Reggie. I know. <laughs> Reggie, yeah, Reggie, yeah. oxen free. Yeah. You got to have him in there. The Reginator. Yep. He so. he doesn't think he's the Reginator. He thinks he's the O-Reginator. The O-Reginator. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but baseball family, we want to know what you think. Are we way off handle here? Did we, did we nail it? I know nobody knows who Jimmy Fox is, and that's fine. I'm I, think, just, I think you'd be surprised at how many people know who you think Jimmy so? Fox is. I'm, yeah. just, I'm a junkie for the history, so I think it's – I mean, I almost put Raleigh Fingers on there. Like, I got really – I wanted to put Raleigh Fingers because of how his image transcended the game at the day he was pitching into a bigger, more monumental thing that drew fans, that became a caricature. That's not – no, that's no another, another guy I wanted on there was Dennis Eckersley. Yeah, but I went and looked at his numbers. I was like, it was like two good years. Now nah, you can't. He's not. In, he it's couldn't not pick. enough for the. Mount but it, it's funny though because but Dennis Eckersley deal. is a huge deal because he's still referenced. There's people still make comps. Great pitchers are still comped to Dennis Eckersley. Yeah, and he transcended down into little league baseball. I had a friend who all the time, and he would just he'd go run out on the mound just for him like, go look guys, I'm Dennis Eckersley. And he throws, <laughs> yeah, he throws yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, like nine doing yeah, this, you know? Yeah. So that's what I mean. If it's who do we think of off the top of our head, we have a way different conversation than it is who do we think of as the best of all time on the team. That's a totally different conversation than who belongs in the storyline, in the narrative. So what do you guys think, baseball family? Is there somebody we left off? How do you look at it? I mean, there's a lot of ways to spin this. We've told you how we feel. 